，包括 reading 也好，所有这些，实际上都是在考你的 communication， right？ 都是在考你的交流能力，你能不能把你自己展现出来？你能不能把你想说的东西说清楚？呃，这边还有一个位置，但是你需要拿两个椅子。这边有有位置，嗯，你能不能把你想说的东西说清楚？呃，你的、你的、你的、你的沟通能力是什么？你的个人的这种性格是什么？你愿不愿意跟人去沟通？这是、这是、这是所有这些学校我们能看到、找到的规律是这样子。那 UTS 是唯一的一个单独考数学的。你看他最后那个地方，他有一个叫 entrance test， 啊，这个地方好像我们打印的这个格式不太对啊，呃，你你们可以自己画个逗号，是这个啊，您您可以再讲 ，OK， require 的后面画个逗号，因为我这个 require 的意思是 S S A T require， 然后 character snapshot 这是一个词啊，这 character snapshot 这是一个词，这个换行换错了。呃，应该第二行是 character snap snap shot， 这个就是刚才我说的性格测试。然后第三行是 UTS entrance exam， 就是它有一个，当你到 step two 的时候，它有一个那个，呃，现在剩最后一张，它有一个呃测试，就是一个是英文测试，一个是数学测试。那它是唯一的一个考数学，除了 SSAT 之外。它是唯一一个考数学。OK， 呃，这就是我今天想跟大家，呃，想跟大家分享。当然，就是像这个这个话题很大，嗯、呃，他们要找一些什么样的孩子，什么我们刚才说你是是一个什么样的人，你有没有好的习惯，你的你的这种好奇心，你的这种呃 leadership， 你的同理心，你的克服困难，你面对输的时候，你那种赢的欲望等等等等，这有很多东西想说哈、啊。那我最后最后最后，其实我想跟大家说，然后我让吴果来讲我们真正的今今天来主要大家听他哈，就我我是我是霸占一点点时间，我想跟大家说说我自己的一些想法而已。呃，最后其实我想跟大家说一个东西，就是我觉得孩子的成功实际上，呃，背后应该是家长的这种关注、陪伴和努力。呃，我们我们呃以前经常讲一句话，叫叫不教而善。就是说，你家长平常的这种行为，你家长平常的这种言谈举止，呃，其实对孩子有莫大的这种影响。你的好奇心，你有没有还保持一种旺盛的好奇心？呃，而是说我们觉得人到中年了，我们就反正我就这样啊，呃，我还没有保持一种旺盛的好奇心。呃，你是不是爱看书？你是不是爱学习？你是不是愿意跟孩子去讨论问题？这个其实对孩子都有重大的这种影响。我个人，呃，我个人在这个里面我有一些体会了，就是说我在跟我的小孩这种交流当中，其实我我我我争取能做到这些。那我发现，当我真的是努力去做的时候，我觉得孩子给我的这种响应是很积极，是很积极的响应。那对他的影响是非常正面的影响。所以我建议大家。在这些地方，呃，这个我们都很这个关注我们自己的孩子，这个我们都非常爱我们自己的孩子。但是从我们自己做起，呃，这个在这些地方，我们家长多加油，多呃给孩子多一些陪伴，多一些努力。呃，有很多这个话题我们可以展开聊，但是，呃，今天我不是主角，所以呃，吴果，呃 ，Let me give you a real quick introduction. Uh, so Ugor is the uh, um, the SSAT SSAT instructor. Uh, he's been teaching GMAT, GRE, SAT, SSAT for years. Uh, he's been a finance professional at the uh, TD Bank. Uh, I mean, he has a you know exten extensive experience in his professional careers and teaching careers. Um, I believe uh, Ugor will bring. You know, a tremendous values to to Linky and to our students, right? Uh, so now let's give a quick round of applause to Ugor. And uh, thank you. Ayasing University as their uh, authorized tutor. So the way it works is uh, the university sends me students, 
and I work with them and I prepare them for their exams, for their projects. And in the meantime, uh, uh, I also have uh, over 10 years financial work experience. I have been also working with uh, finance professionals for their financial designation exams such as CFA, CSC, FRM, all those things. Uh, now, teaching is something that uh, I really enjoy. I uh, like dealing with uh, students and I like to see their progressing in their lives and moving on. I have had, uh, I would say, in these five to seven years, probably I had around uh, three, four hundred students and they all have been extremely happy. I haven't had any issues with any of the students, which is really good. I really enjoy that. Now, another thing, now, our main subject here is today about SSAT. So in order to be successful first, you need to understand the test concept, test format. How is it going to, what kind of questions you are going to see, what is the distribution, what subjects you should be focusing on. So if you take a look at it, we basically have the distribution here. You have quant section, verbal, reading, writing sample, which is not going to be unscored, but, hi there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, that's fine. I think you guys can sit me. So, as I was mentioning, basically writing sample will be unscored. That means you're not going to get any score, but it doesn't mean that it is not important. You still need to show that you are able to write properly, like you are able to write an essay, for example. You need to have introduction, you need to have uh, basically ideas, and also you need to have the conclusion. And uh, another thing, uh, we basically came up with some sample questions just to give you an idea if I can move to the next one. So for example, writing 25 minutes, the topics could vary. It could be anything to be honest. And then another, for example, we have another math question which is very basic just to give you an idea what kind of questions you might be facing. So for example, in a class of 25 students, eight received grade A on a math quiz what percent of the students did not receive an A? The reason why I chose this question, not because I want to solve this question here, but what I want you to understand is, for example, with this question, you need to use a shortcut. You cannot just go ahead and try to figure out on everything and calculate every single thing, because you are going to have a time limit. You are going to have a time constraint. So I'm going to give you shortcuts. For example, I will tell you one thing, for example, Eight received grade A. So instead of trying to find the percentage of eight out of 25, think about it. Half of 25 is 12.5. This is less than 12.5. So that means less than 50% got grade A. So that way you will be able to eliminate certain type of answers. So this is just to give you an idea. And the next uh, sample question we have reading sections. So they are going to give you passages and based on the passages they are going to ask specific questions. With reading sections, the methodology that I came up with is when you read a passage, the biggest mistake every student makes is basically they try to understand everything from beginning till end. It wouldn't work. What I do is, what I have come up with is Basically, you focus on small portions. You summarize it in a few sentences or in a few words, I should say. So you are going to pick certain words which is going to remind you what the subject was. There is no specific rule. I cannot tell you what words to choose. It depends on you. You might choose school. You might choose car. You might choose work. It depends on what might be reminding you what the subject was. If we can move to the next slide. And then verbal questions, you will have synonyms and analogies as well. We are going to go through these different words just to make sure that you are familiar with certain words which are basically commonly appearing in the test. And the next one, we have experimental 
And again, this section is going to have six verbal, five breathing, and five quantitative section as well, which should be very straightforward after we cover all those things. Now, what we are going to do? How are we going to approach this test? What can we do to make sure that at the end of these sessions, you guys are happy and we are happy? At the end of the day, we are working together as a team. If you guys are happy, you get good results, we will be happy as well. That means we are successful. So what we are going to do, as a tutor, it is my job to make sure that I clearly explain the concept during my sessions. Now, you might, sell, you might ask me, how are we going to know that you will be able to explain? That's a very fair question. And what I am going to tell you is, I have been doing this for over five years. And I will give you one example. I had one student uh, two months ago, we started. He wanted to write GMAT test. I'm not sure if you guys know, but if you want to do your MBA, it's like SSAT, but this is just for graduate school. So he got 480, but he needed to get 600. So we studied together for one and a half months. And what I did is, I basically summarized everything for him because I have been doing this for five years, so I know what subjects to focus. But what matters is you need to understand your students' weaknesses. If you don't, it's not going to help. Everybody is different. So let's say I teach in classes as well. So if I have in a class, I have 10 students. By looking at the way they are answering, by looking at the way they are trying to write things down, I can tell you what kind of difficulties they are going to be facing. So based on that observation, I make changes in the class. And I make sure that at the end of the day, everybody is clear with the concept. So that is my duty. Another thing is, of course, in a class, we will have discussions, and I will be given homeworks. And my methodology is, one thing which has been working extremely well is, if you want to explain a concept, you need to give the main idea. So when you give the main idea, you need to make sure that students feel comfortable. When they reach that comfort zone, they will be able to improve on their own. You don't even need to do anything. Because they're, if they feel comfortable, if they notice that they are able to solve questions on their own, they are going to try to solve even harder questions. That's how it works. It's all about psychology. And then I'm going to make myself available every Thursday for students for any questions or concerns. So that will give you the opportunity to discuss your difficulties with me. So based on that, in the class, I'm going to make sure that I am mentioning those weaknesses as well. And I'm sharing those with everyone in the class. Because if we are in a class environment, we are supposed to, at least we should be, learning from each other. So if one student is good at math and the other one is good at verbal, and if I create a good environment, they will be helping each other as well. So all you need to do is you need to create the environment for kids. And of course, as a part of the test, we will be having a lot of practice tests, which is very important because some students, they have, I have seen it many times, so they basically study hard, but they don't even practice at all. So they try to understand the concept and they are under the impression that by understanding the concept, they will be able to get a good mark. It wouldn't work. You need to practice. Practice is the key. And what I do is my biggest thing that which works uh, at all times, I will say, is I basically ask my students to work on the same type of questions until the time they feel 100% comfortable with the concept. When you do, when you have that fundamental understanding, then you move on. You start solving tougher questions. But you don't just jump in from one thing to another just because you were able to solve. No, you need to practice all the time. Because it should stay in your mind that no matter what they ask, if it is related to that specific subject, you will be able to figure that out on your own. When you are reaching that level, then you can move. So that is the key uh, in test environment. If, now, so how are we going to organize this whole sessions? So basically, we came up with seven week uh, schedule. Every week we will be having three hours of courses. So if you can see, we are starting on April the 14th, which is next Saturday. 
And then first, we are going to start with quantitative sections. So we are covering all the quant sections in two weeks. And then on the 28th, we have reading comprehension. So we are going to cover that as well. Now, on the 5th of May, we have a break. I decided to do that because I want students to focus on these portions for a week on their own and see how they feel. So when we come back from the break, they will be able to tell me how they are feeling. If they have any difficulties, then we might be even covering those weaknesses in a short period of time. And then on the 12th of May, we are going with reading comprehension. And then on the 19th, we are going to be covering verbal section. And then we have on the 26th, we will do a review. So I'm going to give practice tests and we are going to solve so, some questions together for math portion. And on the 2nd of June, we are going to do that for verbal section. So this will give me enough information about my students with regards to their performance. Now, another thing that I basically wanted to make sure that we have a very good uh, book that we follow, at least as a guide. So I'm not going to use one book on a regular basis, but I want something that students could rely on for their guidance. And I have gone through so many different books, and I decided Kaplan SSA2 book is the best one. It is, the reason why I chose this book is because it is very simple, to the point and it's very well organized. So they are not going to get confused. There are 20, 25 different types of books. You don't need to buy so many. You need to pick one or two, but you need to be organized. And this book does that really well. I really like this book. So I strongly recommend you guys follow this one. So another thing that I want to mention is, just because we are here today, so of course you want to know what kind of plan you should come up with or what you should do to make sure that you will be very prepared. So I came up with certain things which always works, <coughs> at least based on my experience, it has been working really well. Whenever you have exams, the first thing you need to do is you need to prepare well in advance. So what we are going to do is, let's say we are having a session today. So I'm going to tell you, next week we are going to be covering this subject. I'm going to ask my students to make sure that they are preparing themselves. You don't need to make sure that you understand every single thing, but you need to make sure that you have some basic understanding. Because when I explain something in the class, I want my students to have an idea. If they don't, I could explain 100 times. It's not going to stay in your mind. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is, this part is very important. And I can guarantee you, with 150% confidence that if you do this well, you will be successful. Why is that? Because if you are familiar with the concept, and I give you certain things that, which is going to help you to understand really well, then you are going to be able to cover everything fully. And then when you solve questions, it's going to stay in your mind. That's the key. You could learn something right now with the help of a friend or your parent or your uncle or your teacher. But in order to make sure that it's going to stay in your mind, you need to make sure you cover the basics first. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. You learn today, you forget tomorrow. That's the key part. Because so many people are studying, so many students are studying for hundreds of hours, 200 of hours, and then they wonder why they weren't able to get the mark they want. Because the methodology is not right. The methodology is supposed to be you prepare yourself, you need to make sure when you see the type of question, you need to remember, I saw this one two weeks ago, I know what steps to follow. I will give you one example. Uh, this was actually three years ago. So I had an interview with uh, a company, very good company. So I went there, they said, you know what, we need someone who is really good at math. I said, I'm extremely good at math, like you can ask me anything you want. And it doesn't take me more than 15 seconds. I can solve it. They said, oh, yeah? I said, yeah. So it kind of made me feel worried. I was like, OK, now you are, they are going to ask really tough questions. And if I cannot solve, I will be embarrassed. So the guy asked me a question, which was very tough. It's an integral question. For, OK, you kids probably don't know integral yet, but you will learn when you go to university. 
So it was a very extremely tough integral question, but I remember that question from high school. As soon as he wrote it down, I remembered that because we were solving it. I solved it maybe 50 times, and it was a very tough one. But I remember the methodology right away. Why it stayed in my mind? Why is that? It's a tough one. Why would I remember after 20 years? Because at that time, I covered the basic, and my teacher was able to cover the whole material. Even after 20 years, I was able to remember. I solved the question in 25 seconds. I'm not exaggerating. In 25 seconds. And they were all like, you are the first one who was able to answer. We have been asking this question to everyone. I said, are you serious? They are like, yeah, you are the first one who was able to answer. It's not because I'm a genius. It's not. I'm not. It's not like I'm too smart. It's not. But my methodology was right. I studied it the right way. So this is the key. You, we need to make sure that students understand this. Like, I'm not trying to just only teach your students kids or teach students only one subject. I'm trying to teach them how to approach problems in life. You have something to study, you have a goal, you want to achieve that. How are you going to achieve that? You are going to face this in all your life. So now, another thing that second step is going to be, and if you can move on, practice regularly. That's also very important. As I said, so I'm going to, let's say we are having a session today. So I'm going to say, okay, you know what? Today we are going to cover equations. So I give some examples. And I'm going to say, you know what? These type of questions are really good. Like let's say 3x plus 4 is 16. Can you solve this question? So everybody is going to show if they understand or if they don't. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to give you some homeworks. Please work on this every single day. It's going to take you maybe three, four minutes, but work on it regularly. So the next week, when I ask this question, if I see my students solving it right away, then I am going to know that they are 100% clear. So when this is done, I'm going to move to second subject. And I'm going to say, okay, this time, let's focus on this. For two, three days, solve this every single day every single day no exceptions so when you come back if you are able to solve it i know that is working and then i'm going to review it one more time both of the subjects together and we move on that's very very important now the third one is take time test now this is very important as well all these steps are important but this is the key you could be a smart guy smart girl and you could understand the whole concept that's fine. But under pressure, everybody acts differently. That's very, very, like, it depends on people. I had one student last December. And so basically, she was trying to basically pass SAT test. And we studied together. She was all very good. She was able to understand the concept. She was able to, like, answer my questions right away. And she was very good. But the problem was, as soon as we were solving questions, she was panicking. She was being like, she was changing 100%. So I was like, okay, let's do some tests. Can you solve this? She was like, oh, I don't know. She was giving up. Right away. She's like, oh, I'm not sure. I cannot figure this out. And she was giving up. So I had to prepare her for this problem. So this is very, very important. So if any of the students are having any issues, I encourage them to let me know about this one because this is very very important you could be a very smart student but under pressure everybody acts differently now the next one is going to be identify your weak subjects so here i'm going to need your help like as i said this is not only me teaching here it's a teamwork it depends on the students students need to participate as well parents need to participate as well so if you notice your son or your daughter not doing well in certain subjects or not focusing on certain subjects very well, you will need to feel free to let me know. Or the students should let me know if they are not feeling comfortable with certain subjects. Because as I said, my job is only going to cover, let's say, 60 or 70% of the test. The 30% has to be coming from you. 
if it doesn't come from you, it's not going to work. So we have to work well together. And the last one, you need to stay calm. So again, it's a personality issue. So you might be stressing out. You might worry that uh, the exam might be tough. Or maybe you won't get the score that you want or you have been aiming for. But always remember one thing. Worrying is not going to change anything. You could worry every day, you, every day. It's not going to change anything. It's either you know the subject or you don't know the subject. You need to be honest with yourself. If you don't know the subject, then you need to let me know. Or for the parents, if you know that your son or your daughter is having difficulty with certain subject, even though she is or he is saying that he's fine or she's fine, you need to let me know. That is very, very important again. So now, another thing that is, uh, so you, in order to basically write your SSAT, you need to find the test center and register for that as well. So that is something that uh, you guys need to take care of. But if you have any issues, you can always let us know. We can definitely help you. And during the exam, you definitely make sure you have sharpened uh, two pencils, a good eraser, and your admission ticket. And the last thing is the test. So the test starts usually in the morning at 9 a.m. And it's a very good idea to arrive 45 minutes earlier. And total time for the test is three hours and five minutes. So especially this one, three hours, five minutes, we need to, in order to make sure that you will be comfortable with that, we are going to basically give you some tests so that way you can try either in the class or at home so that way we can see if you are able to finish everything on time and if you are feeling comfortable with all the time frame and that's pretty much all so we are going to see if you have any questions please feel free like as I said this is a team uh, work so we need to be working well together feel free to ask any questions so we can find a way to make sure that we all are going to be happy at the end of this session. Thank you.